Hey everybody, welcome to the CNC with Dave show. We've got a good show for you tonight. We've got Becca Miller that's going to be talking about her CNC adventure as well as a couple other uh, distinguished panel members here. We've got, uh, well, I'll, I'll let them introduce themselves here. Uh, let's go ahead and start on my right, I guess. Uh, Peter, you want to go ahead and tell everybody who you are and where they can find you? Oh, hi everyone, my name is Peter Paswallow. You'll find me on YouTube under the name of CNC Nuts, also on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Thanks for having me, Dave. All right, thanks for being here, Peter. Uh, next, we've got uh, Michael. Good morning, uh, Mike Mertzke, uh, Mertzke Custom Woodworking. Um, you can find me um, on Facebook or uh, on my website, MerskyCustomWoodworking.com, or running along the side of the road somewhere like a crazy man. All right, thanks for being here tonight, Michael. Yeah. And I and I must say, you look rather dashing in that hat of yours. So, <laughs> looking good, my friend. Uh, okay, next we've got uh, Mr. Lindsay. Good evening, y'all. Uh, my name is Mark Lindsay, and you can find me here on YouTube, um, here down in the comment section mainly, and uh, over on Facebook in too many CNC woodworking and guitar groups to count. And uh, when I can remember I'm on Instagram, I'm also on Instagram. And I'll also be monitoring chat tonight for your questions, and so get them in to me as you think of them. And thank you for having me, Dave. Thanks for being here, Mark. Uh, and of course, like I said, we've got Becca Miller on here tonight. But before I turn it over to her, I want to go over a few things uh, here at the top of the show. Uh, number one, I'd like to uh, give a big shout out to uh, Michael Chipser. He got a bunch of, uh, I don't know, older, I don't even know where he got them, a bunch of older uh, computers. Uh, and he was fixing them up and he is going to sell them, uh, you know, really cheap. And I've already bought one from him. And in fact, it came in the mail yesterday. I uh, haven't had a chance to try it out yet, but, uh, you know, these are all older computers that have the parallel ports. So if you're looking for something like that, uh, you know, look at Michael chips or either on Facebook or I don't know where else you can find him. I guess Facebook, Instagram, what, whatever he's on, uh, and ask him about uh, a deal on a computer. I know he had. He showed me a picture. He had a truck bed full of them, but I kind of got a feeling they'll probably start going fast. So if you need an old shop computer uh, that you can dedicate to your CNC, uh, be sure and hit up Michael. Uh, okay. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is, as you probably know. Uh, we've got the 2016 Gatton CNC Christmas Challenge going on right now. Uh, if you're not sure how to enter that or not sure about the rules or something, uh, you can go to either one of my websites, either the www.cncsidewinder.com. Uh, that's my old website. Uh, and also the www.garageworkcnc.com. Both of those websites have a page uh, talking about the uh, CNC Christmas challenge and so you can find out you know there's a little form you can uh, well no there's not a form but uh, you, you know it's got the rules listed there uh, you know so, so if you have any questions about that you can check that out on either one of the websites and uh, you know just shoot a short video preferably less than 10 minutes or so show uh, a Christmas theme project being made on your CNC and send me the link and I'll add it to the playlist and then I will be uh, myself and whoever I, I handpick to help me judge these things uh, will be announcing the winners on the January 7th CNC with Dave show. Uh, so we've got some pretty good prizes. Also, the, the sponsors for the prizes are listed over there on both websites as well. So if you want to see what kind of prizes we got, go check that out. Okay, let's see. Also, have another uh, little thing going on right now. I have a, a Garage Work CNC giveaway that's going on right now. It's, it's uh, I'm taking entries the whole month of December, um, just in case uh, anybody's interested. Right now, we have 715 entries. Uh, and again, if you want to know how to enter that uh, drawing, 
Uh, you can go to the www.garageworkcnc.com website. Um, again, check out the rules. Uh, uh, I want to make sure everybody understands that we're going to be doing that giveaway on a live drawing on this show, January 14th. And you have to be watching live in order to claim the prize. So I just want to make sure everybody understands that before they go and, and fill out a, an entry for that. So uh, let's see. What else have I got here? Oh, another thing I, I've mentioned it the last couple of weeks, but I want to uh, mention it again is uh, anybody that, that might win that, that giveaway, if they're uh, new to CNC and, uh, you know, they live close enough that they would like to come pick it up instead of me breaking it down and shipping it to them, they're welcome to come pick it up. And I would do some, uh, you know, some training and, you know, showing you how to do some things, you know, especially for the, you know, like I said, if you're somebody brand new and doesn't really know how to, you know, even turn one on, I can show you how to get it going and, and you know, spend a couple hours with you to uh, get it going. Plus, you get to, if you come pick it up, it's already assembled. So that's a big plus, too, for a lot of people. So I just wanted to mention that, that that option is available for anybody that wants to do that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. And as a further Another incentive, thing. I believe there's some good barbecue back there, too, isn't there? There is. Uh, anybody that comes to my shop for whatever reason i usually take them down the road here to shane's barbecue so um, <laughs> you, you'll get a, you'll get lunch on me too as well as picking up the machine and also i mentioned mike's hat i just wanted to uh, you know i had some people ask me about getting some hats made a while back and i finally got them made so i've got a garage works cnc hat right there and I also have some Gatton CNC hats. Uh, these will be available for a limited time, or I may do another run of them. I don't know. Uh, we'll see how, how they go. But anyway, if you want to pick one of those up, uh, you can get one of those at either website that I mentioned earlier. Uh, there's a, a buy link on, on both of those. So. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Okay, one more thing. Um, I did want to say, you know, this has been a pretty good year for me as far as, uh, you know, just support for this show and, and for my YouTube channel and stuff like that. Um, even with a few uh, little ups and downs I had earlier in the year. Uh, but I, so I did want to thank everybody that, that tunes in and watches. I see we've got like 73 people watching live now. So. I appreciate all the people that, that tune in to watch the show and especially the folks that, that watch my videos, whether it be, is, you know, whether it be a recording of this show or maybe one of the other videos that I do uh, out in the shop. Uh, you know, I know there's a lot of great content out there on YouTube. So, you know, anybody that takes a minute to watch one of my videos, I just want to say thank you. I really appreciate it. So, Okay, and okay, if I did, I don't think I mentioned this yet. We're not going to have a show next week. You know, next Saturday is Christmas Eve. I want everybody to turn their computers off, put their cell phones down, and go have Christmas with your family. That's what you should do. So, no show next week, but we will be back uh, for the New Year's show. We'll uh, we'll we'll shut down plenty early enough for y'all to go party. So. But we will be back the, the following week on the 31st. So, okay, I guess I've run my mouth long enough. Let's turn it back over to Becca now, and let's see if we got any questions over there. No questions yet. I think yeah, they're I, all... Yeah, I uh, see Ed White. My buddy Ed White's over there in the chat, and he says the barbecue is great. He's, he knows because I took him to, uh, to Shane's one time when he was up here. Yeah, Jerry Brown saying he wants barbecue now. Well, you have to come come visit me, Jerry. I can show you some good barbecue. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're going to talk with Becca Miller. Okay. And Becca, I don't see any questions over there yet, but I have some for you, of course. Uh, I'd just like to, uh, first of all, thank you for being on the show tonight. And yeah. I'd like 
for you to just kind of explain to everybody how you got into woodworking and also what prompted you to get into this crazy CNC thing. Okay. Okay. Well, um, my dad was a woodworker as a hobby. Um, and, you know, I used to watch him make some stuff and it was always, his motto is it's good enough. <laughs> and a lot of it fell apart. So <laughs> when I retired, um, I started and started making some things and I uh, just had a blast. And I try to be better than good enough. I try to make it really nice. And uh, uh, been collecting tools. I've got some pictures that I'll show in a bit of my shop. Um, but then um, I was a computer programmer for GE for my career and i um, very interested in computers always. And then I saw a CNC on the internet and I just went nuts. I said, I got to have one of those. And then um, Next Wave Automation had the Piranha FX uh, on the Kickstarter, for, you know, plan. And I just fought with myself and fought with myself to spend that much money on a tool. But I finally jumped in and bought it. And I'm glad I did um, because it was just, you know, it opened up a whole new world for me. Just, you know, it was, the, you know, everything I wanted it to be. It was, you know, computer control carving. It was wonderful. And then I was visiting my brother in Lufkin, and he said, you got to watch this guy on YouTube, man. He's making his own CNC. And so we sat there and we watched, I think, 14 of the episodes on how to make CNC that weekend. And uh, I said, I can do that. I can do that. And I came home and I built my Sidewinder. And this was about, I don't know, a little over a year ago, a year and a half ago, somewhere in that range. Mark and I were trying to figure out when it was the other day. I've been running it just about every day since. It's just been so much fun and such an exciting way to spend my retirement. So, I've got a question. Sure. Which one of them do you like the most? Now, remember whose show you're on. <laughs> no, there's no doubt. Absolutely no doubt. The Sidewinder is a thousand times better than the Piranha FX. Oh, hands down better. Yeah. There, there, there's, there's, really yeah. It's just, number one, you can control it so much better. The size of it, the, you know, the power of it it's just oh it's a thousand times better it it can do so much more yeah so you want to see some pictures of course we we do all right i i put together some pictures here let's see if i can get them up can you see it okay my screen yes we do um well tell me i have to first of all show a picture of our chorus <laughs> This is what I do in, in, when I'm not in my shop, is I sing. That's me right there with a the hat on. Uh, we sing barbershop music. It's a Texas tradition chorus. And we have a blast. I also sing, I also play bass clarinet. Oops, wrong picture. Uh, bass clarinet in the um, Fort Worth Community Band. Okay. That's it. That's me right there. <laughs> okay. Well, a big shout out to the fourth. Fort Worth Community Band. There, yeah. Um, Bob, I'm gonna. Oh, this is my dog that Mark's been talking about all week. <laughs> this is Sadie. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna. Um, I don't know what kind of order these are gonna come up, but I'm just gonna play all of them, and we'll see. This is um, the laser attachment that I tried to put on, um, Mark. I mean, no. Uh, John Lindsay tried to help me with it. Uh, John Meyer, I'm sorry. Um, but I never could get it to work. And someday I'm going to try to work on it some more. Mm -hmm. And that, that um, looks like a JTEC Photonics laser, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, I didn't do something right. Go away. Let me try that again. Oh. Uh, open I don't have a it's not let me do what I want to do here 
Uh, okay, here's, I have a one garage, one car garage shop. So everything's just sort of jumbled in there together. Everything's on rollers and I roll things around as I need them. But uh, here's my Sidewinder CNC back here. And um, as you can see, everything's just kind of jumbled in there. <clears throat> yeah. Now, and, Becky, I was look. it looks like you have your, uh, your computer way up in the back there. Is that what I see? Um, it's, it's actually, the computer is down here. That's the computer down here. Oh, okay. I, th I was looking at that r directly above where your Z-axis is. I thought that was your computer. I thought that was a parallel that's computer. My, that's my uh, Zalatex uh, uh, controller. Oh, course. okay. Okay, that's your drive box. Okay. Drive box, yeah. Yeah, my computer's down here. It's all hooked in. And then, I, like I said, I have a Frankenstein. I don't have anything neat and pretty like everybody else does, but it works. Yeah, you haven't seen my shop. <laughs> All right. There's nothing neat, neat and pretty about my shop. I just, I just have pictures of everything I have out there. I have an air compressor. I have. Here's a better shot, shot of that. See, here's my computer down here. Okay, you know, there, and there's your little piranha. And yeah, and there's my little piranha over there. And this is an old. Um, <clears throat> bandsaw that I got off of uh, Craigslist. It was an old antique. I sandblasted it and painted it. And it turned out pretty good, that, I think. Here's that the is finished very product. Cool. I like that. Yeah. Wow. And it works like a charm. It, 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 you know, old is not bad. Old is good. Yeah. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with old stuff. That's right. Uh, this is my um, table saw that I bought off of Craigslist. Uh, there you go. Yeah, I got that one um, at a prize deal. Man, it was great. It was I, I, oh, I envy that table saw so bad. That is a beast there. That's a beautiful yeah, table is. saw. It's yeah. about the size of Mark's shop. Yeah, it is. It's about the size of my shop. I'd have to crawl <laughs> over that to get out the door. Well, you notice I have a one, one car garage. You notice it's, there's the front of the shop, and <laughs> it's pretty oh, man. It fills it up. Yeah. That, and. And you know, they can say what they want about saw stop. That right there is the industry standard. There's more oh. of those in shops, professional shops working eight hours, eight, ten hours a day than there that's, will ever be saw stops. That's the standard right there. That's why I made it. It is just a beast, and I love that, it. That's the last one you'll ever have to buy. Yep. <laughs> and, of course, I, I got this one off of Craigslist. It's a, a, a little, um, you know, air, um, a vacuum. And um, this is my dad's old sander, works like a charm. I got several things from, inherited several things from my dad. This is his old um, drill press. I and think I have that exact be. same drill press. <laughs> <laughs> that sucker's got to be 50 years old and still works like a charm. Uh, let's see. Um, Oh, here's my uh, grinder, and I mounted it under here, and I got a kitchen mixer lift and put on there, and it just lifts up when I need it and then back down out of the way when I don't. And someday I'm going to make drawers to go in here. <laughs> <Haven't gotten laughs> <those. laughs> um, let's see. What else have I got in my shop there? Uh, here's my lathe. Uh, when I retired, my my team um, pretty much bought this lathe for me. They they raised money to buy a tool, and this is what I bought. Great wow. great team I work for. Oh, here's the um, sandblaster from um, Harbor Freight, and I got it put together, and it really works great. Um, I I went online and I and I checked got a lot of modifications that people had made and I followed all of their suggestions. I put a light in it and I sealed everything really well because it leaks if you don't, you know, if you just follow their instructions. You can see I've got extra stuff in there. Um, let's see, you saw that, you saw that. This is my joiner. Uh, that was my dad's too, I think, yep. Uh, that's my lathe. Um, 
this is my miter saw. Uh, right now, <laughs> my friend and I are redoing my living room, so it's uh, out in the living room instead of <laughs> putting the floor down and stuff. Uh, what have we got? We got the oscillating sander. Um, a paint, uh, spray painter. This is. The and you've only been at this for a couple of years, you said. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> she's got a lot of cool toys, don't she? I'm telling you, she's got the big boy toys. <laughs> I don't this, even have half of that in my shop. I'm telling you. <laughs> this is the Piranha Controls um, and the Piranha FX and with the, the plate, uh, you know, to, the Z, to set the Z. It's kind of cool. I like that. Uh, we got a planer. And a power washer, got a Rockler power lift and table, um, router table. Uh, what else we got? Oh, I know what else we got. We got this. Isn't that a beauty? It wasn't quite finished yet in this picture, as you can see, but it was almost yeah, that, finished. That's probably my favorite right there. Yeah, mine too. I, I'm a little partial. <laughs> We're still working on making that the industry standard, but one day. <laughs> the pictures of it getting put together there. Uh, okay, well, Becca, since you're showing pictures of the, the parts and, and putting that thing together, did you have any problems uh, with your build at all? Uh, I had the only problem I had was after it run for a while, I started. Um, um, it, it started jamming on me and I couldn't figure out why. And I finally figured out that my, um, my uh, lead screw was too short. And um, I had cut it to 48 inches and it really needed to be about 48 and a half inches. So what I did is I put this extra piece of wood on the inside here and moved the... Um, 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 the bearing? Bearing, yeah, the, uh, yeah. out to this one. And it's and and I cut it here so that the um, the gantry could still run all the way down, and it works fine. And I, that's the only problem I've had. Okay. And everything else was just worked like a pen. Do you have uh, do you have any pictures of things you've made with that CNC? I do. Um, let's see CNC projects. How about this? Um, the first thing I made ever, and this was on the Piranha FX, was this. And it was my bottle opener that I made for a friend of mine. I can't vouch for the OU, you know, but that's, oops. That's where he went to <laughs> it doesn't have a long horn on it. It ain't good. <laughs> uh, so um, let me see. Yeah, we got we got Juan's out here in the chat. Why he ain't in the uh, on the panel, I don't know. But he's out there saying he thought you was a Seahawks fan. No. <laughs> Not a chance. No, never. <laughs> that would be Juan. <laughs> I am a Cowboys fan. And these are some of them that I made for Christmas last year for different friends. And oh, see a Longhorn. Mm -hmm. There you go. So that's that's a picture of your finishing department right there. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see what else I made. Um, uh, the clock I made. This is a Vectric clock uh, from uh, the plan. Uh, this was the first thing, first big thing I made on the Sidewinder CNC, and I did this uh -huh. last Christmas, and I made it for um, present for my sister-in-law. And uh, there it is, all finished. It really turned out pretty nice. She's got it hanging in her wow. kitchen. And she loves it. Yeah. That's neat. That's beautiful. Yeah, it did turn out nice. Um, let's see what other CMC projects I've got here. Uh, the golf trophies. I've made a bunch of golf trophies. I uh, did golf trophies from last year. Uh, this was the spring. And then they asked me to do some more in the fall. These are the fall ones. They, they said so, they had people entering just so they could get their trophies, these trophies. 
<laughs> so now they they came up and they asked you uh, if you could make those trophies for them, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, Oh really? Uh, that's that's real good. Begging is yeah. a higher price. Um, <laughs> did <laughs> now? How did they find out about you? Did you advertise, or was this just word no, of mouth? Just one of the guys that was um, in the disc golf tournament um, is a friend of mine, and uh, okay. he had been to my shop and he had seen some of the stuff, and he and he came and he said, "Can you do this?" And I said, "Sure, I can." Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So again, yeah. if you build it, they will come. That's right. Okay. And I wanted to show you the things that I did before I got my CNC. Um, this is my fireplace in my house, and it was so boring. So I made a fireplace surround. This, this was before the CNC, so this was built just on my using my router and my table saw. Holy cow! <laughs> Nice. And you've been and doing this less than two. Wow. Two years. The first, actually, that was the first thing I made. And this wow. is the loft bed that I made mine um, for his daughter. And it's got a desk underneath and a bed on top. And um, let's see. I made a. Oops. Well, that's in progress. This is a banquette I made for my nephew for his new house. It's not quite finished there. I didn't get a picture of it finished, but didn't have the edging in it and stuff. But, and that was all made. That was made from some walnut that a friend of mine gave me. Uh, he cut a walnut tree down in his yard and wow. uh, had it cut up for me. And wow. it turned out beautiful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and Dave, you might recognize this. Yeah. That, <laughs> I made this that does look from familiar. Dave. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, oh, and this is what I did this week. This was a, an end table I had, and the top top was just totally ruined from a chemical spill. And um, so I got some, some oak and glued it up. And um, anyway, there it is all finished. Wow. So I think it turned out pretty nice. I just I just finished that like day before yesterday. Wow. So anyway, that's what I've been doing. Uh, <laughs> some of my favorite things that I have. Um, this is, you know, once I got this, if you don't have one, buy one. It's fabulous. Uh, I just got it about a month ago, and it's wonderful. And somebody turned me on to this for my uh, vacuum. Uh, I got it at the Christmas in the Christmas display. It turns the Christmas lights on and off. It was pretty cheap. I don't know, seven dollars or something. Now I can turn my vacuum on all the way across the room. And the other thing I absolutely love is the muscle chuck, so I don't have to fight with changing the chuck. I just use a, this um, Allen wrench to tighten it and unscrew it, and box the thing pops out, and it's all mm -hmm. good. Okay. And what type of router, so there, router are you using, Becca? It looked like an 892. Is that what you're using? It's an 890, I believe. 890? Okay. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, it's the same router I have. Yeah. Okay. And the, and, the DeWalt on it. Okay. And also, I haven't seen anybody in the chat ask it yet. Of course, I haven't really been catching all of it as it scrolls up but on the on your uh sidewinder uh what are you using for programming and i, I could see your mach 3 screen yeah i'm uh when you show the picture of the computer but what are you using for programming um uh, the vetric uh um vcar pro um i got vetric desktop with the piranha but it only goes like 25 inches so when i made my um sidewinder i upgraded to the uh, desktop pro, I mean to the VCAR pro. pro, yeah, and they gave me a real big discount for, for upgrading. I think it's awesome. Yeah, so so you've been using that, I guess, for what, a year and a half or so? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tell you, if anybody's starting out, the hardest thing, absolutely the hardest thing about CNC is 
learning the programming of the, the CAD part of it. Because once you get that done, running the machine is easy. But you have to learn. It's, it, and, and I probably spent two or three months, and I'm good with computers, <laughs> learning the ins and outs of getting everything to work the way I wanted to in VCAR Pro. And then once you get that done, it's wonderful. I mean, it's so easy on the, you know, once you get it fit to that point. Yeah, I, I, I really am a big fan of the Vectric products. Uh, you know, I use VCAR Pro myself and been using it for, I don't know, eight, 10 years, something like that, I guess. And it's uh, very user friendly. And, and I know a lot of people kind of balk at the price a little bit, but to me, it's worth twice what you pay for it. I wish I could afford Aspire, but I can't afford that. If I quit buying tools, maybe it's good. <laughs> yeah, and uh, when you think about it, I mean, Aspire, or excuse me, Aspire, VCarve Pro, you're right, a lot of people do balk at the price, but just a couple of jobs, you can make that back real quick. Yeah, and, and I, I mean, say that, I say that because I balked at the price when I first got ready to buy it. And back, back when I bought it, I think it was even a hundred bucks less than it is now. And I just, I just didn't want to do it. And I thought, well, I'm building machines and I need a good software to be able to really show what the capabilities of this machine is. So that's, that's why I bought it. And of course, then after I bought it, I'm like, Oh geez, this stuff is great. But uh, I saw a question just about to scroll by there. Uh, somebody asked, how long did it take you to build the Sidewinder? I think it took me about a month. And I don't work. I'm retired. So that was working on it a lot. <laughs> and and I'm slow. I mean, and, and, and also, I was pretty new to word working at that time, too. So I had a lot to learn, you know, and, and I made some mistakes building it and had to redo some things. Like I used materials I had around the shop and they weren't strong enough. Um, I didn't use Yeah. Them. And just, I I, you know, I guess, <laughs> you know, sometimes on this show we talk about the, the sidewinder. You know, I know Mark's got one as well. And I guess we probably should clarify for some of those people who are fairly new to watching this show and all. Those plans are, uh, if you look at my YouTube channel, I did a video series on, on, it was called How to Build a CNC Router on a Shoestring Budget. I think it's like, I don't know what, 13, 14 videos, something like that. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. and I gave away those plans uh, along with the, the full scale files where you could print the, you know, print them out full scale and, and glue them to the plywood or MDF or whatever you were using and cut them out yourself. So. A lot of these machines that you're seeing, like Becca's, you know, were cut out with just traditional woodworking tools. They weren't mm -hmm. cut on a CNC right. um, or anything like that. So just to uh, kind of catch some people some up. Of the, um, the, my little piranha, but I only cut, you know, this big. So it was only <laughs> a few of the smaller pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I figured you had to cut most of them out with traditional exactly. tools because not many are going to fit on that little piranha. If you look at it, you can tell. I mean, it's not nice and pretty like yours are, you know. I mean, the, the slots are, you know, pretty, pretty even, but they're not, and, you know, but it works. And yeah. and everything lines yep. up. I've got it all lined up straight, but it's cut out by Yeah, well, that's you know, that's one of the reasons why when I came out with this newer design, I just decided to sell the kits because – Back when I was doing the other one, I always had people, you know, like I'd send them the plans and they'd look them over and they'd email me back and go, man, can you cut these parts for us? And I really didn't have the time back then. Uh, of course, now, I'm, you know, I got plenty of time to do it. So, um, but yeah, uh, it's, uh, that that's a good little machine. There's a lot of them out there. I know, you know, I, I lost track of how many, like I said, because the people would email me for the plans. And at one time, I know I've uh, sent out over 4,000 sets of those plans wow. back over the course of two years and a few months or something like that. So there's, there's uh, got to be a lot of them out there. 
but it's always good to see one that's uh, really cranking out some great stuff. It's been working. It's been working solid. <laughs> what size of a cutting area do you have on that, Becca? It's uh, 22 inches wide and 33 inches long. Um, that X is 22 and 33 Y. Have you ever come uh, across where you needed uh, a larger space and and I guess the I tiled on it. That's uh that's what I was telling Peter back uh, when I had my um, Piranha FX. I that's that's why I know about Peter because I looked up on the web and I said how do I tile and I found his video and I figured out how to tile and then once I got my Piranha I mean my uh, Sidewinder then ah I know how to tile and so I was able to. Yep. You think you'd ever build a bigger one in the future? Yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> that didn't take long. <laughs> There's always a new, better, and bigger machine. That's right. That's always. Right. always. <laughs> I think somewhere I heard bigger is always better. <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> okay, wait. Yeah, I, didn't, I, I didn't realize. Santa had slipped in here on us. <laughs> so uh, to answer one question we had in here from Gussie Banjos, uh, you've had your CNC, your uh, Sidewinder CNC, for less than two years then, correct? Correct. Okay. Okay. So, all right. That, that, that's the only real question that I've got for you right now. Okay. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay. Um, We've got another one. We've got we've got two more that are off topic, but I'll save them for the end. I got a quick okay. question. Okay. Uh, who inspired you the most, Becca, to get started? I guess my dad. Yeah, he he like I said, he was a woodworker. He he uh, <laughs> he made some really bad stuff, <laughs> but but uh, you know he 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 enjoyed it and he did make some good stuff and uh most of it fell apart but we, you know i've we've patched them back together and i always wanted to to give it a try and see if i could you know do it better and i think i have um for you know for, so he could see what i've done but he's been gone a long time now i tell you just that fireplace surround if that was your first woodworking project holy cow <laughs> Thank you. Holy cow. Yeah, I, I know guys have been in the business 10, 15 years that can't do something like that. <laughs> it just takes patience. <laughs> you know, take it slow and easy. <laughs> so you right, know, back, like, almost everything was built one piece at a time. Right. That's right. I, I was going to ask Becca, I, I'm not sure, but I think I saw something on Facebook. Uh, a comment you made. Are you planning on an entry in the uh, <laughs> CNC Christmas challenge? Actually, I have one designed. Um, I, 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 I'm hopefully going to get it done this week, and I'm going to get one. Put in. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, I mean, you've still got you've still got a little while because we've got uh, you know we're going to take uh, entries on the the videos right up to uh, midnight Christmas Eve. So you've got uh, about a week, I guess. I've got all the design work done on it, so I just need to, to get out there and build it. Yeah. I'm right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is your, uh, other than, you know, we talked about what issue you had as you were building that thing. Have you had any, you know, or what would you say is your other uh, biggest thing as far as the learning curve? Well, like I said, the, the, the VCAR Pro is the biggest learning curve. Um, other than that, you know, you, your, your um, video on Mach 3 was so perfect. I mean, once you, you know, you follow your instructions, I mean, it took, you know, half an hour or so to get out there and set everything. But then it just worked, <laughs> you know, and, and it was it's so much fun to, you know, Hit the button and watch it work, and I still watch it work. <laughs> yeah, all of the better people do. Ah, good. 
I, I keep telling folks that they'll get over that one day, but I'm not sure. It may be a permanent deal for Mark. <laughs> I, I, I think Becca and I are kindred spirits on opposite sides of the continent because yeah. when I hit that cycle start button and that bit lifts up and it moves over, I'm a five-year-old. It's working. It's working. And I built it. Holy cow. You know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I know that, for me, when I when I build one, and it doesn't matter whether the it's a garage work CNC or one of the plywood machines or whatever it might be, whenever I build one and I'm putting the stepper motors on and hooking them up and getting ready to fire it up for the first time, I never get tired of that. I always enjoy, you know, hitting that first jog button and seeing the thing come to life for the first time. But as far as running the machines, like the one I run out there every day. I hit cycle start and I watch it for, I don't know, probably four or five seconds to make sure, to make sure it is moving. And then I'm, I'm off doing something else. Okay. Well, but how many, how many CNC's would you say you have built? Well, you know, that's a tough, I mean, as far as selling, I've sold between the kits and the, the garage mm -hmm. works and the get CNC's and all that. I've sold a good, a jillion of them. But okay, the, but back, I mean, back, personally, as personally assembled and gotten together and got well, running. Well, back in the early days, and a lot of people don't even know that's you know, if you look at you know that I, I mentioned that web page, the cncsidewinder.com. That's a really old web page because I used to build machines under the Sidewinder CNC name, and back when I did those, I built every single machine. Okay. I would. Take, you know, I mean, I would get the parts from the fabricator. I would paint them a beautiful machine tool gray. Uh, <laughs> I'd always have people say, well, can I get it a different color besides gray? And I go, nope, that's it. <laughs> Any color you want as long as it's machine tool gray. So I'd paint them myself. I'd tap all the holes. And I would literally, I've got pictures. I, I'll have to get them off the computer, the, the desktop back there and maybe share them with you guys sometime. But I've got pictures of, at the time, my two car garage I was using for my shop then. And I've got a few pictures where I think I've got like five or six machines built all at once on different roll around tables. But the, I would, I would literally build every machine, fire it up, test it, you know, run it for, you know, an hour or so, make sure everything was fine. Then I would take it all back apart, crate it up and then ship it. So, you know, talking about that is probably somewhere between 100 and 200 machines that I've put together and fired up. So I'm pretty okay. sure all those older, older pictures and videos were in black and white. <laughs> well, okay. So I think maybe, maybe it after, wasn't that long ago. Maybe after my first hundred machines, that'll that new thing will start to wear off a little. But right now, I'm just I'm I'm a five year old. <laughs> well, I, I guess it just depends on on what else you have to do. In my case, you know, I I I can't make any money if I hit the button and stand there and watch it. I got to be yeah. doing something else and be productive. So once. Once you start trying to make money, if you're just doing stuff for yourself or friends and it's all stuff you're giving away, that's, that's one thing. But once you, you, you know, you're trying to make a buck off of it, you'll learn real quick that, Hey, I'm standing here watching this thing and I'm costing myself money. I gotta be, I should be over here sanding or running a table saw or what, you know, whatever else you got to do. And, and, you know, how many times have you sat there and watched your machine? And it ran perfect, and you could have you could have been doing something else, but that whole thirty minutes or whatever it ran, you just stand there watching it. So your point, <laughs> and, and you have a valid point. But ninety nine times out of a hundred, I'm waiting on the part that it's cutting so I can wait, <laughs> and I'm not trying okay. to make a living with it. I'm okay. a hobbyist. You might you might want to rethink your workflow process then. <laughs> I'm a hobbyist. Right. I'm not trying to make a living with it. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I try to always stay busy while the, um, you know, my CNC is operating, but I do find myself sneaking back and uh, taking a peek every now and then. Mm -hmm. Okay. If yeah. nothing else, clean your shop and you can't, no one on this panel can sit there and say that you can't clean your shop while that thing's burning. I meant to mention yeah. I mean, yeah. 
Russ, that, that I needed you to come over with your shop back a few times. <laughs> Russ, you I'm, in a, garden, I'm you, in a garden shed. I clean my shop with an air hose in about 30 seconds. If you're talking <laughs> to Santa, you just got on the naughty list. <laughs> I, I, I clean my garage with a with a leaf blower. <laughs> there you go. I, I stand up at the front and fire it up and blow it all out in the, the front of the yeah, door. Yeah, and, and Russ told Duct tape the small me stuff all down. about how you slaved him labor out cleaning the sawdust out of your garage. And so be careful, Dave. You're on verge of being on the naughty list, too. Well, that's how uh, Russ got on the nice list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jerry Brown. He, it looks like he knows about leaf blowers. Mm -hmm. You duct tape the small stuff down and blow it out. Yeah, of course. I don't. I've I've found since I made the uh, uh, the dust shoe that it, as long as I I keep the uh, the filter on the shop back clean. Of course, I've got it running up through a. Uh, one of those top hat separator things and it really does a pretty good job it you know when it's when the dust shoe is hanging off the front or the sides a little it may leave a little bit but uh it gets most of it i'm very happy with 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 that and then when it's when i can see that it's not picking up anymore i know it's time to go take the filter out of the shop back and go knock it against a tree or something yep. but you know dave with that that shoe you can't watch the router. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, See, that's, that's true. And that's why I got the dust shoe I got because you can peek in through the uh, the clear plastic and best of both worlds. That's the yeah. reason I built a full blown enclosure so you can watch the whole thing run around. Okay, I got a couple of questions in for uh, Miss Becca. Uh, Lyle Foyt wants to know what you use for hold downs on your CNC table. You know, I've tried a bunch of different things. Um, I've I've destroyed a couple of clamps, uh, <laughs> um, but I've pretty much just screw it down now. Uh, I screw down the corners. Okay. Okay. And Gussie Banjos wants to know: Have you upgraded anything since you first built it? No. No. Okay. I've 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 cut out a, a dust shoe, but I haven't I haven't put it together and installed it yet. Okay. On I mean, okay. the laser, which was a total failure, so that didn't work. Uh, okay. Well, uh, I have two. Uh, we're getting close to the top of the hour, so I've got two off-topic questions here, Dave. If we have time. Uh, okay. One of, one of them for sure is uh, a Russ Meadows CNC update. That was from Brian at uh, Summers Woodworking. Of course, now he's having a chat with somebody behind him, so he can't hear me. Oh, I'm back. Oh, he is? Okay. <laughs> I'm back. I'll turn around just in time to hear my name, huh? Oh, okay. Uh, why do you want an update on my machine? <laughs> I just wanted to it's know. How, okay. I wait all week for an update. <laughs> oh. That's why people watch this show now, Russ. Don't you know that? There's 88 people. Working, uh, subscribers. Uh, no, it's it's working great. And uh, the only problem I have with it is when I'm working on my day job. And I have the same I'm problem. thinking about the machine and what I want to cut, what I want to do. And as a mailman, that's a bad thing because I put mail in the wrong box. And I have to back, <laughs> back, up, to back up. I thought I you guys that. did that anyway. No, that's only Cliff Clavin does that. <laughs> uh, but uh, I find myself doing it all the time. And I said, man, this has got to stop. Yeah. I can't help myself. I think yeah. about that well, machine every day. You should probably just go ahead and quit that job then. I yeah. told my yeah. wife. I said, Since it's causing you so much grief. It's not coming. It's, it's down to the few minutes it's, it's going to be coming. And I'm about ready to let it go. Okay. I want okay. to cut wood. <laughs> By the way, I, I thought I would uh, point out, I mentioned at the top of the show about the computers that Michael Chipster has, and he's over there in the chat. So if you're in need of a good uh, shop computer to use as a, you know, dedicated to your CNC machine, 
you can check him out over in the chat. He's uh, yeah, he says he has six ready for shipping right now. Yeah, I think he put Windows Seven on. So it'll yeah, I I haven't I haven't had a chance to plug mine up yet. I, I may get a chance to try to do that tomorrow, but uh, I'm pretty excited about because the one he sent me is real small, and that's that's exactly yeah, what I wanted. Anyway. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, and take the, up a lot of room. the last question I have here is kind of a free-for-all. Um, oops, no, another one just came in. Uh, I'll get to you in just a minute, Richard. <laughs> uh, this is going to be kind of a free-for-all here for everybody. It's uh, But Miss Becca, being one of the newer people, would be right up her alley. It's from Doug Reese. He says, I'm just getting into CNC. I just got an X-Carve. What should I be reading to get going? Are there any books you would recommend he should get? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm not even going to comment what I was thinking. <laughs> no? No. <clears throat> My comment Anybody is you ought to starve and build yourself a get and see and see. <laughs> Yeah, I would. I, I I should be ashamed of myself, but I was going to say, yeah, you, you should be looking up a book how to sell an X car. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> well, he, he 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 readily admitted it's going to be his entry into it and just learning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I just think uh, you know, just take it light and easy with that thing, and you'll you'll do fine. You'll learn a lot with it for sure. Yeah, I think no matter what CNC you get as your entry level CNC or whatever, I, I I don't know if I haven't seen any books or I mean I know there's a couple, um, you know different forums out there for different CNC groups and stuff like that. But I would say the best getting into and learning thing you can do is just get out there and do it. Just exactly. cut stuff, you know, you know, make tool paths and then cut them, and then make some more tool yeah. paths and then cut them, and you, you just learn by there. Yep. Don't be yeah, afraid to try something new. Um, exactly. You know? And also somebody posted in the chat there, everything is on YouTube too. There's a ton of yep. videos about X carves on YouTube. So, um, yeah, yeah, probably uh, the best yeah. thing. I, I haven't seen any books myself on, uh, on CNC that sort of take you through things and yeah. YouTube would be the best I, idea. I I, I think it'd be hard for somebody to write a book on, on CNC machines because there's so many different, you know, there's so many variables. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, there are books out there. My daughter, the yard sale um, junkie, brought me a CNC book the other day. Uh, well, not the other day. It's been a few months back now. But the thing was written in 1982. So, you know, <laughs> home CNC was just not... Uh, even a, uh, an option back then. So uh, yeah, everybody's right. That, and that would have been my comment as well. Um, as far as XCARV is concerned, get on the Inventables forum, ask questions, watch videos. Everything is on YouTube. And, you know, hit the various YouTube channels of the people who do CNC. I mean, you know, Peter's got an excellent channel. I, I, I think I say that every week, but I learned more watching Peter's channel and watching the projects he does and did, then I ever thought I would uh, be able to learn by, you know, doing uh, reading or participating in a message forum. You know, I mean, I've worn, I wore out Dave's website. I wore out Peter's website. I, I mean, because it's like potato chips. You can't just watch it once. You exactly. can't. I, yeah. I can't tell you how many times I have watched that ding dong cam clamp you made, Peter. I must have watched it fifty times. <laughs> they made a clamp yet? Uh, and I, no, no. <laughs> uh, and I was getting ready to when I had to replace my spoil board. But uh, yeah, I, I want to second that about Peter's videos because since uh, since I've been watching a lot of the the stuff he's done recently, um, you know that is. Uh, Christmas challenge project and uh, some of the ones he's done in the last month or two watching those now in my whatever you call that the feed or recommendations or whatever I get these other videos by him popping up and it might be something he did four or five years ago and I'm like man I didn't know he was doing that back then yeah you know but yeah I, I've uh, 
Peter is a, a great source to, to, to learn a lot about CNC. Oh yeah. And Big by time. the way, all the, all the, if you look in this description of this video down below, you'll find all the, the links to not just Peter, but Becca and Mark and Mike and mm -hmm. Russ and Russ and everybody that's on here as well as some that aren't, that aren't on here. So, um, and you know, it, and don't be afraid to experiment. I've told this story a hundred times before, but I went on Craigslist and looked in the free section. Now I know for Craigslist isn't all over the world, but there is a local version of it in most places. I looked in the free section and I found a guy giving away a stack of old fence boards. He had replaced a fence. I went out and got a stack of fence boards and I made sawdust out of them. I just cut things. I mean, I would download a project and cut it and just, just to do something to learn the machine, learn how to model and learn how to uh, calculate tool paths and save G code. And if I messed it up, I didn't care. It was free wood. It went on the burn pile. So uh, I can't tell you how many, <laughs> how many feet of fence posts I, or uh, fence boards I cut up on that ding dong thing, but it works. You know, nothing will ever replace experience. And the only way you can get experience is to do it. So just do it. Yeah. And, and one more thing I, I want to mention to, cause I know we get people that are brand new at watching the show and you know, they're either brand new at CNC or maybe they're still, thinking about it and haven't taken the plunge yet. One thing I do want to remind you of is when you get a CNC, they're, they're a lot of fun. They're really cool. And it's neat to be able to put something on the, the CNC and hit the button. But just remember that the CNC is not always the right job uh, or the right tool, I should say, for that job. You know, sometimes it's quicker to do it with a table saw and a router table or, you know, whatever it might be. Just because you can cut it on a CNC doesn't mean you have to. Uh, uh, you know, a good example of that is uh, a lot of times you use your CNC to make a template, but then you do, because now you've got a really accurate template, but you go do all the other work with a router table or bandsaw or, you know, mm -hmm. what have you. So, yep. so keep that in mind. You don't have to, you don't have to have a CNC and, and then once you get one, that's all you ever use. You'll still use all the other tools in the shop. That's right. One last question for Miss Becca. What is your favorite finish? That's for Richard. I'm so boring. I just use polyurethane on almost everything. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> that's, that's the way I am. I do. I leave a lot of stuff raw just because I hate putting a finish yeah. on stuff. Exactly. <laughs> Spray lacquer can be your friend. There you I, go. Love, I love spray lacquer. Anything in the can. <laughs> yeah, me, me and spray lacquer are like uh, best buddies. I guess I'm the weirdo because it just depends on what I'm doing, and I actually like finishing. Yep, you're weird. <laughs> yeah, he's right. Yeah. I like oils and um, waxes. Mm -hmm. Very hard to go wrong with them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Some of them are kind of labor intensive, but I agree with you. There's there's not much that looks like an oil finish. But, yep. But I like that process. <laughs> Something for me to learn. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if hey, it works please. for you, you're doing it right. So. All right. Have we got any more questions that you've got wrote down? I don't know about Mark. Uh, no, I have none other here. Uh, that was the last one, uh, except somebody throwing in stuff, you know, as we go along right now. How do you guys finish photo V cars? I've never done one, so. Well, that's that's a whole other show in itself. That's, we'll have to that's get, a whole different show. When, whenever Melinda gets time to come back on the show, we, we probably should do two or three shows with her because, you know, the finish is what makes the photo V card work mm. and the, and the wood selection is important too. So anyhow, uh, well, I guess we're going to wrap this one up. We're right at 10 o'clock. I, I did think of something that I was going to say earlier. And of course I always forget to write down something. I thought I was doing really good making notes tonight and I still <laughs> forgot something, but I want to, uh, 
kind of throw something out there. I know there's a lot of people that uh, that watch this show or watch the video, you know, after it's recorded or whatever, that have either uh, a garage work CNC or they might have a, an old Sidewinder CNC like Becca and Mark or they or they're building a Gatton CNC, and I want to. Uh, I, I want to do a, um, a page. I'm, I'm going to do a page on both my websites. Uh, I'll do one on the garage work CNC so that anybody that's got a garage work CNC, if they want to send me a photo, uh, you know, we'll kind of make it like a, a photo gallery page where we'll show different people that have those machines and, and we'll plug their YouTube channels and just any, any little thing you want to tell about yourself. Uh, we'll put it on that page. And the same thing on the other website, the uh, cncsidewinder.com website, we'll put, uh, I'll make a page. So if anybody out there has got one of the old sidewinders or they're building a the Gatton CNC and they'd like to, you know, send me a picture. And again, you know, tell me your YouTube channel if you got one. We'll, you know, kind of make it a, 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 like I said, kind of a photo gallery where you can see the different machines, see the, uh, you know, some of the different design modifications that people make, because I know there's a lot of cool stuff. I I, I don't know. I, I wish I had a, a number, but I would hazard a guess that probably a lot of the people that that build the machine, especially the, the Gatton CNC, probably don't build it exactly to the plans. They're probably making it either wider or longer or smaller or whatever. So, um, you know, I think... Uh, you know, I've been wanting to do that for a long time. And some people do send me pictures when they get one done or, or maybe part of their build or something. But but any kind of photos anybody wants to send me, uh, you know, just, like I said, just say a little bit about, you know, what the picture's about and uh, anything that would be interesting to other people. And I will get it written up and posted on the website. And, and maybe for those of you that have YouTube channels, maybe help plug your YouTube channel a little bit. So. Get those to me, folks. And I guess that's, gosh, 10.02. We're like record time here. All yeah, right. Well, I guess uh, we're going to wrap this one up. Uh, everybody uh, over there, we got still, I think, 81 watching or something like that. Thanks, guys, for hanging around. Thanks for watching the show. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, Y'all have a Merry Christmas because, like I said, we're not going to have uh, a show next week. Y'all uh, keep the computers off, turn your smartphone off, and <laughs> enjoy Christmas with your family. Thanks, guys. Thanks for everybody being on the panel tonight. Becca, thank you so much for coming back on here and sharing your CNC journey with us. Uh, always good to have you on here. Thanks, Mark, Mike, Peter, Russ, and Russ. And I guess that's going to do it, folks. Thanks. Y'all have a Merry Christmas. Merry we'll Christmas. See uh, yeah. Merry Christmas, New Year's everybody. Hit that thumbs up. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas.